Hi guys, what is up? Welcome to my channel. So for today's video, I'm going to show you how you can recreate this look that I'm wearing. So this is a really fun video. I'm going to be using very popular makeup products that you probably have in your collection. And even if you don't, feel free to just dupe these with products you already have. The whole premise of this video is so that you don't have to leave your house to recreate this look. You already own the products that you need. So if you would like to see how I did this look, then just keep watching. So I was definitely in the mood to talk and teach today and just apply some makeup and have you guys here with me. So I thought that this was the perfect type of video to do. You guys seem to love the last time where I did this. It was called a makeup tutorial you can recreate without leaving the house. So the whole premise is I pick popular makeup that a lot of people have and that's the makeup that I use to create a look. Obviously, I can't guarantee that you have this makeup, but I know for a fact these products are talked about a lot on this platform and a lot of you guys have purchased them. So hopefully, if you have these products, you can recreate this look along with me. Or if you don't have some products, find some similar products in your own collection and follow along with me. So for my base, I chose the Bobbi Brown Vitamin Enriched Face Base. This is pricey, but a lot of you guys really, really love this primer. It's very pop and even if you don't of course any primer that worked for you will do this is a clear translucent product whatever your skin type is go for it but I have very dry skin so I really love this primer I feel like it really gets into my skin a headband here to keep the hair out of my face. For foundation, I chose to use the Maybelline Fit Me. I have the matte and poreless, and mine is in the shade 125 Nude Beige. This was like the drugstore foundation for a long time, and truthfully, it is still a very, very good foundation, and it's also one of the cheapest foundations at the drugstore as well. So not only is it <laughs> really really affordable especially on the drugstore spectrum it's affordable but it also is a really nice lightweight foundation so honestly this specific bottle of foundation i feel like i've had forever probably could refresh and buy a new one but this is actually a really really good drugstore foundation i enjoy it a lot it reminds me of the makeup forever ultra hd foundation in that it's just kind of the perfect in between for everything it's lightweight it's not super dewy it's not super matte i know this is supposed to be like the matte and poreless but honestly it's not super matte but it's just a really good reliable foundation i definitely feel like this is the makeup forever ultra hd of the drugstore the last time i did this video i think i used the l'oreal infallible foundation and oh my gosh ever since i filmed that video you guys i can't stop using that foundation i knew it was good i've had it in my collection for a long time but my love rekindled for it and i even like it more than I did in the past. It's amazing. Dang, my skin looks really, really good with this foundation as well. For eyebrows, I'm using my Benefit Precisely My Brow Pencil. Benefit and ABH are the two kind of eyebrow brands of YouTube, and for good reason. Their products are really good, though I do feel like nowadays you can get a really good brow pencil from a lot of different brands. Back in the day, a few years ago, only good brow products were from either ABH or Benefit. And for a while, I was tried and true to ABH. I refused to give Benefit my time of day just because ABH was here before Benefit as far as eyebrows and Benefit just kind of decided they wanted to do eyebrows. And it's true, a lot of you guys might not have been here for that, but ABH has been doing brow products since the beginning. And then I think Benefit kind of saw there was potential and space in the brow community, which of course there always is. And they just kind of took that and ran with it. And they also became like one of ABH's biggest competitor. Now they have brow bar and all of that stuff that ABH had first. I'm not gonna lie, you guys. They did, I was around for it. For concealer, I'm using my e.l.f. Camo Concealers. I just recently picked up a dark color so I can really test this concealer out to see how I like it because I have a really light color. So one fun thing about quarantine is that I've been able to really test out my own collection, shop my own collection, and just 
use some products and give some love to them. I've still picked up new products as well just because that is the nature of my channel but there's a lot more time and room for me to post videos like that and you guys have really seemed to be enjoying them where I talk about older products. So I hope you guys have also been able to dig into your own collection. For me as somebody who finds makeup very relaxing, I love wearing makeup around the house. I love being able to wear makeup that I wouldn't necessarily feel comfortable with wearing out of the house. So believe it or not, I know some people are taking this as time to not wear makeup and let your skin breathe which is also fine. If you have extra time, like really experiment with makeup, hone in on your skills, and just wear things that you wouldn't normally wear. Wear makeup items that kind of have been sitting because they're not your normal color story. And just experiment and give the makeup that needs some love some love. Now that this concealer is my color, I can actually give a true opinion. And my under eyes do look good. They still do look a little bit dry, but I definitely like this better now that it's actually a decent color for me. So to set, I'm using the Too Faced Born This Way Ethereal setting powder. I just remember I wanted this powder for the longest time because I heard so many people talk about it so I did eventually end up picking it up and it's a decent powder. I wouldn't say it's like my favorite but I like it a lot. I think it definitely gets the job done. You know it does what it's supposed to do and it's just a very lightweight powder. It does a nice job setting so I think this is a good powder. I think it was like James Charles or somebody who really liked this powder. I think he convinced me to buy it. I don't really care for James Charles anymore but years ago Go. I did watch a few of his videos and I remember he convinced me to try out this powder. For bronzer, what I picked out was the Too Faced Chocolate Soleil Bronzer. I don't know if anybody is into this bronzer anymore, but I remember this was one of the first bronzers that I ever bought. Not this one specifically, I did repurchase it, but the reason it was so popular was because it smelled like chocolate. And Too Faced was one of the first brands that became known for like making scented products so this was a big deal back in the day and i don't really like this bronzer as much anymore it's fine it's doing its job but this color is actually much darker than i prefer nowadays it's a little like poopy colored i don't know so i don't love it but it does get the job done so once i finish this i will not be repurchasing it but i do like it and i just use my sonia g face pro brush by the way she did restock these it's amazing for bronzer okay so let's move into the eyes because the reason why I wanted to film this video was so that I could play with this palette. I'm using the Tati Beauty palette, which of course is very, very popular. I've only used this once, which is embarrassing to admit, but yes, the one time I used this was the one tutorial that I did or review video that I did. So it's time to dig in because I want to use it. I don't know why I only use this once. I just get really backed up with a lot of new products. I don't really wear makeup to my job, so most of the time, the only time that I wore makeup was when I actually filmed, and when I film, I film a lot about other products. So I never really got the chance to use this, and that's what also is really great about this quarantine, is I can dip back and use the products that I wish I could have used more. So I'm using, by the way, Too Faced Shadow Insurance, which is another OG of YouTube. Like 10 years ago, everybody was like, you have to use this primer. This one or Urban Decay Primer Potion. I want to do a halo eye. I did a halo eye yesterday. You guys really liked it. I, of course, used different colors. I used the one from the ABH Jackie Ina palette. I'm gonna do kind of the same technique but obviously different colors. So I'm gonna start off with the Soothe Matte right here, just kind of that perfect transition shade. I have no idea what the look I did on this palette first looked like, the one look I've done. And I do kind of bridge the two sides together. So you want to pat on one side, pat on the other. This is the Morphe Y17, by the way, such a good brush line. I love the gold handled brushes. They're such good quality. A lot of you guys were very offended <laughs> when I didn't put this in my best neutral eyeshadow palettes. And it truly is just because I hadn't used it. <laughs> So that's why it's like a bit of a warmer tinge to it than I was expecting. Okay, we're going to dig into with a bit of a tighter brush a MAC 217. The Ritual side of Soothe. I'm going to work this out here and let's kind of wing it up a little bit. I did have a couple of requests 
to do that fox eye trend that's going around. I can't do that, you guys. I'm not scaled enough. I mean, I've watched tutorials on it and they are very, very helpful. So I would suggest just looking into other tutorials, but the only tips I would have for you are really the tips that I've seen from other tutorials. I do wanna try it though on myself just to see if I can really get that crazy fox eye. I would definitely have to like conceal the end of my brows to get it to work, but oh my gosh. Bella Hadid, she's so stunning. How are her eyes like that? Truly, they're just so beautiful. While I'm at it, I'm just gonna put those colors down here also. Kind of doing the same technique and still leaving the center. The black in here is supposed to be amazing, so let's try it out. I'm just getting just a touch to really kind of deepen. So I hope all of you guys are doing as well as you can be doing in quarantine. No, it's still super scary. It's been like three weeks since I last done this video, and from three weeks ago, for me, not too much has changed. It's just kind of like a waiting game for things to go back to normal. I've been doing online teaching, which has been, there have just been different challenges than I expected with the online teaching. And I think it's not just me experiencing this. I know it's teachers all over the country, but man, I feel like a lot more time is spent chasing down students, trying to make sure they're turning their work in more than I thought. Of course, you don't know what a kid is going through or what's going on at home. So it's it's just really hard. You know, I just feel like I'm not giving the quality instruction that I could provide in person. None of us were trained for this, truly. And I know for me, my age group, since I'm a new teacher, like we were taught the most of technology out of any generation of teachers, but none of us were prepared for this. So it's a huge learning curve for me and for my kids and it's just we're doing the best that we can and i think we're doing a really good job it's most definitely not the same so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna take a little bit of the elf camo concealer i'm taking my lightest shade i definitely want that to be the brightest i'm gonna take my refer 21 brush and i'm going to kind of clean up in the middle over here. Nothing too crazy, just really brighten up this area. When you have a little bit of product left over on the tip of my brush, on the tip of your brush, start kind of sketching out a little bit of a halo. I didn't do this in yesterday's look, by the way. I just used my finger to create a blown out look. Today, we're gonna do something with a little bit of precision. I'm gonna pat these areas out. So the concealer doesn't have to be perfect, okay? It's just really mostly about the precision up here and then anything that happens kind of on the lid area, it's okay. So I think we're gonna jump into the orange tones now. So I'm gonna start off with this shade right here from the story. This is Sequin. And this is going to start out here. Ooh, this look could go very bad. <laughs> just press that in. Blending will happen, I promise. This has a lot of fallout. So I'm really focusing on blending the outer edges towards the color that we already have. And what you can do to blend it more is dig into the colors you used out here, infuse them together. So I'm taking the brown, the matte chocolate brown shade to blend that into the orange. We're gonna definitely want to use Story again, but the metallic finish and from what i recall didn't love the metallics here it's not moved by them yeah still not moved by them finger helped still not giving me the coverage that i love i'm gonna take a pointer brush now and i'm gonna dig back into that orange metallic and we're just gonna trace the top here so the good thing about these pencil brushes is they're gonna get into the areas that you cannot get into. Okay, I'm gonna clean off this brush and kind of go back and forth with the three colors to make everything even and blended. I feel like this is turning out really muddy. I'm getting so much fallout on my face as well. I did not prepare for this. So I did take a little bit of the orange shade and put it really in my outer and inner corner, just kind of filling the lid space because I feel like it's going to be a little bit more cohesive this way because I wasn't really liking the harsh dark black brown to orange. And that's really helped. So that looks way better. Still though, the shimmer is kind of making me mad. It's just not looking right. And then I'm gonna take kind of the tip of a shader brush. I'm gonna go into the light brown transition shade and we're going to kind of 
recarve out this. And then in the center of the lower lash line, pop the orange shimmer. I feel like these are all neutrals. They kind of should have blended into each other a lot easier. I don't know. You let me know what you think, but I didn't have the easiest experience with this look. I didn't at all. I need to apply some of that story. Like the shimmer isn't even showing up down here. So I'm popping the matte version of it just to bring some warmth down here as well. I know this would be like a weird combo of colors, but I didn't expect to have such a difficult time blending these into each other. So just food for thought, really. Definitely, I'm gonna have to continue to dig into this palette, but that was not the best experience. So let's continue forth. I'm a little disappointed by that. I don't know, it's just, it's not my best work, people. It's not. So for blush, I did want to have a nice mix of high-end and drugstore in this video. So I chose my Wet n Wild color icon blushes and I'm thinking that Keep It Peachy is going to do good here. I know this looks disgusting. It shattered the day that I bought it. I was too stubborn to press it the right way or throw it away. So it looks horrible, but the color's very, very nice. This is the Sonia G Soft Cheek Brush. Love this for softly applying blush. Oh yeah, this color is perfect and this color is only $3. So I need to order a fresh one of this so I can get this ugly one out of here. These blushes are so good for the price, it's crazy. So for highlight, I'm using the ABH Nicole Guerrero palette. Not only can you purchase this now because it re-released, but it was super popular back in the day. So I'm excited to bring this out. And I'm gonna use uh, some of Daydream, actually. That would be perfect for this look. This is the old palette, like from the original release. I heard that the new palette has a bit of a better formula, like there's less glitter. So I'm excited to see about that. I bought it mostly for my makeup kit because I do have some clients that really want a blending highlight. So that's a perfect way for me to also see if it's a newer formula or not. <laughs> Definitely kind of use that as the excuse, but I will be putting it in my makeup kit. This color is like perfect for that. I loved this highlighter palette. Back in college, I used it every day. Back when super blinding highlights were in, I loved, loved, loved this palette. That's the perfect highlight color. I actually want to spray my face down because it's looking a bit dry. I'm going to use the Morphe and Jeffree Star collab. Don't really recommend this. Makes your face feel sticky, but it was the closest thing I had to me. This scent's really strong and artificial too. So for eyeliner, I think I'm going to use this Jeffree Star Unicorn Blood. This is a lip pencil, but it can be used in the waterline as well. So it's just like a dark red. I wouldn't necessarily call this popular, but it's just eyeliner. This does not match what I had intended on doing. I want to leave the upper lash line blank. So I'm gonna go straight into mascara. I'm just using my Benefit Roller Lash that I'm trying to get rid of. We're just gonna go big with falsies and we're gonna use Lily Lashes in Miami. These are a very, very popular lash. They're not my favorite lash because they are a bit big. However, I think for this look, I'm down for that today. I wish my M Cosmetics order came in because I bought one of her lip colors in faded clementine and that would have been perfect for today's look while my lashes are drying i'm gonna be using kylie cosmetics velvet liquid lipstick in commando do you remember when it was so hard to get your hands on these guys i didn't like her liquid lipsticks but i liked her colors so i still kind of put up with it but her velvet liquid lips are good okay let's pop the lashes on Then, so to kind of orange this look up, I'm taking my Pat McGrath Bronze Temptation Lust Gloss because I feel like it's going to warm it up even more. So I think that's kind of everything. So I'm gonna kind of make sure, get my hair undone and I'll be back. All right, so I had to change my top because the pink was bothering me. But here we are with the final look. I think overall kind of looking at this beautiful burnt kind of apricot look, I really do like it. As far as all of the products went, it was very nice to dip back into these. They're all classics for a reason, really great. Though I do have to admit, I'm a little bit disappointed with my experience with the Tati palette. And I know I'm probably gonna get a lot of hate for that. Uh, my first experience with it, I really liked it in the review. I thought everything was 
blendable and everything was really great and I think kind of doing more of a precise application just it wasn't working for the palette in my original review I wasn't crazy about the shimmers I definitely still am not they definitely had problems adhering to the lid they weren't giving me the type of coverage that I needed meaning it wasn't covering up the concealer at all you could see the concealer underneath with the shimmers in here it shouldn't be like a lid topper formula there should be some coverage to it to where you can't see the concealer underneath there's so many brands that don't have that type of issues I was very surprised at how that orange was blending in with the brown meaning I had trouble with it it just wasn't as smooth as some other palettes that I've used for this type of look so I made it work I do like the look but I think doing something more precise made this palette more difficult I don't think the colors liked sitting on top of that concealer and I don't know I need to play with this some more to kind of redeem it but definitely with the look that I tried out today it wasn't feeling what I was doing not this type of technique so hopefully I will have some better experiences with this palette but I've got to be honest I'm just I wasn't moved by it today but I mean overall the look though is nice I like the look so I hope you guys enjoyed this video let me know if you recreate this tutorial did you have the same problems that I have and how did you aid them for me I feel like the best thing that I did was really just take the orange all the way into the inner corner and all the way into the outer corner to kind of force the two colors to blend together because I wasn't able to get a smooth transition at all. I think now I'm on a mission to really, really dig into this palette to make sure it's what my original review stated. So that is all I have for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. It's always fun to dig back into my collection and to also use products that I know a lot of you guys have as well to recreate this look. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you aren't subscribed to my channel, I hope you guys take the time to do so and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye guys, have a good one.